are on Twitter at Backendless and also on Facebook uh, slash Backendless. It's very easy to find us there. Uh, I recommend joining and following us. Uh, we post updates from Backendless quite frequently. But uh, let's start with push notifications. So push notifications uh, is a feature on mobile devices, and uh, they're really everywhere. So uh, Windows devices, iOS, uh, and Android devices all have push notifications in one form or another. The, the biggest advantage of push notifications is that an application or a device can receive a push notification even if your application is not running. And it's very easy to bring some news or some updates to a user and have them go back into your application whenever a push notification occurs. So various devices and operating systems have different ways of presenting push notifications. So for iOS, you have an option of displaying a pop-up, which user can configure what form it is going to be shown as, whether it's an alert or it's going to appear as a little push notification message at the top of the window available through push notification center. On iOS, you can also deliver it as a sound or a combination of sound or a badge update, which is just a little number. You can see right here, these are example of badge notifications on iOS. On Android, uh, it goes directly into the notification center, which is quite useful. Uh, on Windows Phone devices, you can. Uh, there are also various ways to deliver a notification. It could be a tile update. It could be a toast notification. So there is really a variety of them. Uh, however, the, the basic uh, idea and the flow of getting notifications done, and let's step away from Backendless for a second, is, is fairly straightforward. So here I have a diagram that shows how push notifications work for Android, but it is almost identical for Apple and Microsoft. And the, the flow is this, uh, a device sends out a registration to a, a notification service. So it would be either for Google, for Android devices, or Apple or Microsoft for corresponding operating systems. So a device needs to register. And once the device registers, it gets back a registration ID or a token. And that token is used by uh, an application server to deliver a notification to that specific device. So once a device gets this token, it sends the token to the application server. And then application server uses this token to push notification by talking to the actual notification service, which then turns around and delivers that, uh, that, that notification directly to a device. By looking at this diagram, you can see that if you were to support push notifications for different operating systems, then there is a, a variety of different issues that come up from the integration perspective because first of all for each operating system you have to implement the the process of registering the device because uh, since we are talking about different notification services for apple for microsoft for google the process of registering is going to be different it will require each implementation has its own ways of registering a device then you have to communicate that token to the application server and right here, this is where the complexity is going to be. You have to integrate your application server with various notification services. So it's going to be one way of delivering a notification to Apple. So it turns around and sends that notification to the devices. And it's going to be very different for Google and, and somewhat different for Microsoft. So the complexity of implementing this for various uh, operating systems and devices is going to be quite high and, and time consuming. So as a result, uh, the, the benefit of uh, using some sort of unified messaging system is, is quite high. And that is exactly what Backendless provides. So with Backendless, this flow would look like this. So first of all, you have uh, your device, and it doesn't matter whether it's a Windows phone or Android device or an iOS. We provide uh, an API that is almost identical across the board to register this device. And it's really going to be just one single API call to uh, register that device with Backendless. Now, Backendless actually does all the, provides an implementation and hides all the complexity for contacting the notification service, retrieving that token, and uh, associating that token with the device. And then step two 
is just using our API to publish messages. So from the developer perspective, it becomes trivially simple because you don't need to worry about integrations with Google, Android, or, or Microsoft. Uh, all, all you do is you basically just consume our APIs and you get to enjoy a delivery to, 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 your, to the devices. So as far as the, the actual publishing of that message as a push notification, it is available in all our SDKs, including REST. So uh, for Android, you basically get a fairly, basically just a one-liner to, to deliver a notification. Same thing for Android, for JavaScript, for, for uh, ActionScript. Uh, and if you, are, if, you, if, you, if you step outside of the, the standard libraries that we provide, and you just want to use REST, you can easily do that as well. So if, you, if you're programming in Python and you want to deliver push notifications, uh, you can still do it with Backhandless just by using our REST API. So I'm going to uh, describe some of the specifics about those APIs, give you some examples, and then we'll review uh, specific projects that implement push notifications and just so you can see it actually in action. So from the device registration perspective, I have an example here for Android and iOS. Uh, really is just a one-liner to register a device. For Android, you have to identify that device with a GSM sender ID, and I'll show you where you can find it. It's actually when you go to Google APIs, it's gonna be the project ID or the, 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 pro, the, the ID that represents your project as it's registered with Google. And for iOS, it's, it's gonna be the device token, which is very easy to obtain. And uh, I'll, I'll show you the example, a complete example of that as well. So, uh, but that, that's pretty much it as far as device registration. So there is also one for, for Windows Phone that I, that I didn't put in here, but it's also just, just as simple as this. So on the publishing side, here's an example of sending out a publish uh, message as a push notification on iOS. So there are three concepts here. There is a delivery options object. There is publish option, publish options object and uh, the messaging service itself as, uh, as it is represented by, by uh, Backhandless. So for delivery options, there are some, some various things you can, you can do to configure how you want that message to be delivered. So you can, do, uh, uh, you can either do it as a push broadcast to deliver it to, let's say, all iOS devices registered with your Backhandless applications or a spe specific device. Uh, a push policy uh, defines whether this message goes out uh, only as a push or push and just a regular publish subscribe message. So with, with Backendless, anytime you publish a message, you, you, can, you can specify whether it's going to be a push only, which is just this pure push notifications, or duplicate it as push notification and uh, just a regular pop sub message. So uh, as far as publish options, this is quite important because with uh, various operating systems, you can define how that push notification is going to be, how it will manifest itself once it, once it is delivered to a device. So if, if you're targeting iOS, you can say, well, it is going to be an alert, or it's going to be a badge, or it's going to be a sound notification. And to support those, we introduced various headers that you can specify uh, whenever you uh, send out a message to a device that basically go out as message headers. And it basically boils down to just this call where you publish your message, you specify publish options, and you specify delivery options. And then the rest just happens automatically. Uh, things are somewhat similar with Android. Once again, you can specify push policy, uh, set your headers, and send out a message. So that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, and as far as REST, it's once again kind of mimics what we just saw with Android and iOS. You specify your application ID, secret key, and then the body of the message is your, your message and some of the headers that go out to a, a, a well-defined URL for, for our REST service. So uh, let's review some of the specifics when it comes to a particular project, just to show you how things, what things would look like. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to quickly jump into uh, Backhandless console. Uh, first of all, if you haven't tried to do anything with Backhandless, the number one thing that you would need to do is to understand that whenever you're building an application with Backhandless on the client side, uh, whether it's a web application or a mobile application, today we're talking about mobile because we're talking about push notifications, 
you have to identify your app with specific IDs that we generate. So if you go to manage and then app settings, you'll see there is an application ID and there are secret keys for various environments which we support. So if you're building an Android app, you'll need to make sure that you use this application ID and this secret key, which corresponds to Android, uh, to identify your app. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> going back to the actual code for, uh, for an Android example, uh, this example is actually included with our SDK. So whenever you download, you'll, you'll see exactly the same thing. Whenever this application runs, uh, it is going to be initialized with this application ID and secret key, as you can see right here. And then immediately here, there is a register device call. So this would actually, the result of this method invocation registers that device with, with backhandlers. And once it is registered, you'll be able to see a list of all your devices in your application. And to do that, if you go back to the console and select messaging, Right here uh, on this panel for messages, you'll see any messages that are going through the system. And as far as the devices, if you go here, you'll see a list of all the registered devices. So before, before this webinar, when I was preparing, I registered, uh, I ran a sample app on my iPad here. And then this device registration is actually a device uh, that, that I have right here that I'm gonna be using for the demo. So, uh, but that's pretty much it. So once you, once the device is registered, you don't need to do anything else. Anytime a message is delivered to that device, it will uh, a push notification will pop up, and when the user selects that push notification, the application will automatically open, and the uh, user will switch to your app. So the simplicity, you hopefully you can appreciate the simplicity because I don't think it can get any simpler than that. Things are somewhat similar with iOS. So let me switch to Xcode. And uh, here there is a, an example. Uh, it's called Push Notify, which is also included into our SDK. You can definitely check it out. Uh, whenever this application starts, there is a standard uh, API call in iOS, which is register for remote notification types. And you specify which types you're registering for. And as you can see here, there are three types, alert, badge, and sound. And by the way, if you are using an iPad or an iPhone, whenever an app is registering for a notification type, you'll see that pop-up that says application such and such is requesting, uh, is registering for push notifications. So that, that pop-up is happening as a result of this application call. Uh, a callback for that call, which is basically at, at the iOS level, is going to happen right here. And... Uh, uh, it is, it is called did register for remote notifications with device token. And uh, the operating system gives you that device token that represents that particular device registration. And then what you do is you say backendless messaging service register device token. And that's it. So that, that completes that device registration. And as a result of this call right here, that device will show up in the list of devices in backendless console that I have, uh, that I have showed previously. So, uh, and at this point, you can actually just start delivering push notifications. So here, since it is running on uh, on my iPad, and uh, uh, unfortunately, it will not run in the simulator, you uh, you just have to have an actual device in order to uh, to test it out and try it out. So here, I have my uh, my iPad. Let me run this application uh, right now. So you should be able to see it uh, right here on the device itself as, it's, as soon as it starts and let me know if you cannot see it I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll try to adjust the webcam but as soon as that application runs you'll see it's uh, showing up so right here uh, here's the app and from here you can actually send out a message itself but what I'm going to do is since this application has registered and is running uh, uh, is, is attached to my app in Backendless I'm going to switch to uh, actually get out of this app I'm going to go to Backendless Console right here, and uh, I'm just going to send a push notification to this particular app. So I'm going to say, hey, iPad, it's going to be my application. And then as far as the, uh, the headers, I'm going to say it's going to be an iOS alert, which is going to be the, the name of the header. And I'm going to say this is a push notification.
So also what I can do is I can target a specific device. Well, I'll kill, clearly I can broadcast it to everybody, but in this particular case, just for the demo, I'm going to select this device, which will, which, uh, which is this particular iPad, and I'm going to say send a push notification to the selected devices. So once I click publish, so here it is. You actually see a little pop-up that says this is a push notification. Uh, so we can see that the, the push notification took place and was delivered out here to that particular device. So, uh, and if I click launch, the application will just start. But also what I want to demonstrate is uh, I can do exactly the same thing using the REST API. So here uh, I put together a little command using CURL. And as you can see, I, I specified application ID, secret key, uh, my application type is REST. And the right here, uh, there's a message. And also uh, in the headers, there is iOS alert. So if I run that particular REST URL, you can see it just delivered a push notification to, to my iPad, all right? Um, also, uh, if I were to uh, say that this particular push notification is not gonna be an alert, but it's gonna be a badge update. So right here, uh, I'm not sure if you can see, but this particular icon is, uh, is the actual push notify application. So rather than saying iOS alert, I'm gonna say, iOS badge and uh, put the number right here, which will basically, let's just say one. And here it is, we, we received that push notification and uh, on the icon, it just switched and uh, shows one right here. Uh, so hopefully you were able to see it on, on your screen. Some other things that I, that I would like to mention for iOS. From the configuration perspective, there is one step that you would need to take care of. If you go to ma uh, manage and select app settings, right here down below, you will see that there are mobile settings. And in the mobile settings, you have to specify uh, a certificate file that Backendless will use to communicate with Apple Notification Service. And uh, this certificate file is uh, obtained when, when, when you go to your developer portal and obtain uh, a certificate for that particular app. You import it into your keychain, and from there you create the actual certificate. And uh, this is all this is all in our documentation. It's fairly simple, as you can see, and that's really all I, I have prepared for you to show today. So if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to uh, to answer them.